Hey guys, Britman117, welcome back to the channel and the Halo UNSC Hornet Recon set HKT18 from Mega. This set's part of Mega's Halo Universe line and if you're unfamiliar with the line, it's a line they created to feature sets from any game other than Halo Infinite. The set's suggested age rating is 8+, it comes with 291 pieces and two figures, a named character in the form of Sergeant Stacker and a generic ODST. The Hornet itself is based off the one we see in Halo 3. The set's original release date was late 2022 and has an MSRP of around $25, but as usual, prices will vary. It is, however, currently available on Amazon.com as of making this video, and I've put a link in the description below, which you can use if you'd like to help support the channel. For those of you that appreciate box art as much as I do, I'm sure you'll agree that Mega have done a fantastic job here. Starting at the front of the box, you can see a great image of the Hornet being piloted by Sergeant Stacker with the ODST perched on the side. As well as the top right of the box, you can see a clear image of the figures included with the set. As we move on to the side of the box, you can see this epic landscape panoramic view of the Hornet flying away from some kind of huge explosion. On the other side of the box, you've got the customary huge Master Chief, which I absolutely love. And below him, again, a picture of the Hornet and the two figures. On the top of the box, you've got the huge Mega logo, again with the two figures included with the set. On the back of the box, we've got another image of the Hornet, this time with the cockpit up. You've got Sergeant Stacker in the ODST again, as well as another action shot of the Hornet flying away from that cinematic background. Although this time you've got the ODST and Sergeant Stacker perched on the side of the Hornet, so I guess it's on autopilot. Just above that, you've got an image of the play feature that's incorporated into this build. And on the bottom right, you've got one of the new sets to be released in 2023, which I believe is the Mongoose Outriders set. One final thing to mention about the box before we crack it open is the size. I was very surprised to see how small the box was when I first received it. And when compared to its predecessor, the UNSC Hornet Blitz set from a few years back, it's noticeably smaller, especially considering it's got over 80 additional pieces in the box. And if we go back over a decade and look at the Covenant Revenant attack set with 281 pieces, slightly less than the Hornet recon set, you can see it absolutely dwarfs both sets. So hats off to Mega for really cutting down on their box size and doing their bit for cost saving and the environment. And speaking of the environment, this is also my first set to consist of paper bags inside as opposed to plastic ones. So once again, a double win. And so here it is, the latest iteration of the Hornet from Mega. And I think it looks absolutely fantastic, especially when compared to its predecessor, the Hornet Blitz set. And it really does go to show what a difference an additional 80 pieces to a small build can make. As you can see them alongside each other here, the builds are pretty similar in scale when it comes to the Recon and the Blitz, but they are poles apart in terms of quality. The Blitz is, well, let's face it, underwhelming, but the Recon is a real showstopper. I really like how well they finished off this set. For me personally, this is the perfect combination of tiled off areas as well as studs. I always want to see some studs because you want to know it's brick built, but I don't want to see a lot of studs. I love this smoothed off finish and I just think it makes it look so much better on display. I much prefer the canopy on this one. I don't like the blue of the old one. I'm not going to make comparisons to the older versions of Hornets because they're a completely different scale from a different era. But as far as this generation of Hornet goes, I think the canopy on the Recon set makes all the difference to the set. As we take a closer look, you've got detailing everywhere. On the ends of the propulsion units, you've got nice printed caution sloped pieces. On the tail fin, you've got printed UNSC as well as on the side of the canopy. They've also used some brick built parts to give a flash of colour on the side of the canopy with these red part slope pieces as well. Inside the cockpit, we've got a very nice printed slope piece. On the backs of the wings, if you can call them that, you've got some flaps which are moving on this one, not like on the old Blitz set. And then on the underneath of the thrusters, you've got these nice little rubber blue propulsion pieces to suggest the thrusters are being used. And on the tops of the wings, you've got the triple barrel machine guns instead of the projectile launchers, which you have on the old Blitz set, which I think is definitely a step in the right direction and makes the set look more real and less play like. On the front of the Hornet, you've got this sensor array built up unit, which again is a big step up on its predecessor. 
Another big step in the right direction was the way they produced the, the legs or the, the landing plates, whatever you call it. Again, slightly fragile like the older one, but heaps better in design and a much better look overall. They are pretty tight to get on. You kind of have to be patient with how you line it all up or it won't go on. But once they're on, they are relatively sturdy. So it's definitely lots to be pleased about with this Hornet, but there are a few things that I'm not so keen on. But then again, that may just be me. For one, I don't approve of the play feature, but that's just me. I'm an old man. I don't play with these things. And the novelty of it is just not worth the trade off on all of the color, the hole in the top. And also, if you want to pose it, the actual thrusters tend to just flop from side to side rather than staying in one place because there's no friction amongst the gears. So they kind of flop around and have a mind of their own. I'm sure you could modify it if you want to, but I don't want to modify it. I want to keep my stock set stock for display. So not the end of the world, and I do understand why they do it, just personally, not for me. Also, I'm not sure if there was any reason to it, but some of the gearing and the, the technic parts, if I'm allowed to use that word, are yellows and orange, which is visible from outside. Now, it may be that I haven't had a good look at the source material. Maybe they do have yellow there, but I'm not sure why else they would have put them there because you use grey ones in other areas of the build. So they could have just put more grey ones in, but they've put yellow ones in. So I don't know, maybe that's to highlight that it is a play feature or maybe that is actually true to the source material. Either way, I do feel it detracts from the overall look of the vehicle slightly. So whether you agree or disagree with the inclusion of the play feature, I don't think it changes the fact that this has to be one of the best rebuilds of an existing set. Since the Sparrowhawk in the 2019 Aerial Ambush remake, that was an absolutely brilliant new take using current parts to remake a classic set. And just like the Sparrowhawk, this was a fantastic build, not too difficult, really enjoyable with some interesting build techniques using all the current parts. But that's not all. This set comes with two fantastic figures, starting off with the named character. Sergeant Stacker comes with a silver magnum and green body armor. And it's not the metallic green as we've been seeing in the Infinite line. It's the more matte green, which I'm a big fan of. I think it looks absolutely fantastic when paired up with the gray undersuit of the upper body and the kind of earthy, I'm not really sure what color you'd call that but an earthy mottled tone for the legs and the forearms the boots are molded in green and then painted with gray over the top to give them that dual mold look his hat is removable but i strongly suggest you never do that because once you see what's underneath there you can unsee it so leave it on the face mold and paint detailing are some of the best i've seen for unhelmeted figures in the halo line all in all this guy looks absolutely fantastic. So really, really pleased to get an absolute top quality figure from Mega. But it doesn't end there. The unnamed figure, the ODST in the set, has to be one of the best ODSTs Mega have produced. Unfortunately, I've yet to receive the Hive Exterminator set, so I haven't seen the ODST in that set. And I also haven't had the drop pods. If they're as equal in quality as this guy is, Boy, are we in for a treat and are we being spoiled because this guy looks Halo Heroes quality, not just from the paint applications on his shoulder armor and the camo printing on his forearms and upper leg armor. Just the quality of it just looks absolutely, it's so crisp. It's one of the best produced figures I've seen in a long time. No quality control issues with either of these figures. And if we can get a close up on the visor for this, that has to be one of the best paint applications on any visor I've seen on a Halo figure. Hopefully this means a step forward in quality control with Mega or possibly even the fact that they're using another supplier now for these figures, which either way, it will be a step in the right direction. And I really do hope it continues. So all in all, I think this is an absolutely fantastic set for both the vehicle and the figures. It's a win all round. And if you do decide to pick one up for yourself, as mentioned earlier, you can support the channel by using my affiliate link in the description below, and it will be very much appreciated. And that's just about it for this review. So as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time.